Hi math students. In this video, we're gonna look at solving some equations like these that have multiple occurrences of a single variable. So what I mean is that the we only have one variable, just x, but it appears more than once in an equation. So this video is about how we deal with that. So first I wanna start with uh, by saying that this video assumes that you have some certain uh, basic solving knowledge. So uh, if as I'm talking about uh, certain things in this video you're feeling uncomfortable about, for example, why 2x plus 4x would be equal to 6x, go back and check out this video that says uh, why x plus x is equal to 2x, and there'll be a link at the end of this video uh, to that one, okay? And uh, also, if you're not sure about, if this statement is looking a little bit long and complicated, and you're not sure or comfortable about solving that, then maybe take a step back and go check out a video called um, Solving Two-Step Equations that I have a link to at the end of this video, okay? All right, let's get started. <clears throat> so first, I think, um, let's start with the idea, let's start with a reminder about the technique or the method that we use for solving these equations. So if we have a two-step equation like this one, uh, 2x plus 5 equals 11, something like that, and we wanted to solve it, right? Solve means find the value of the variable that makes the statement true. And uh, I'm not sure what it is, right? Uh, I guess it's 3. If x is 3, then we have 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 5 equals 11. So 3 makes this statement true. Now, the method that we've been focusing on using for solving these equations is to isolate the variable. So if we can use the properties of equality to create simpler equivalent statements that have the same solution, then eventually we'll get to a statement that's so simple that we'll be immediately able to see what the solution is. So for example, if we take this statement, which is kind of a little difficult to see what the solution is, but we use the subtraction property of equality, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an equivalent statement like this one, 2x equals six. And the deal with equivalent statements is that equivalent statements have the same solution. So whatever value of x makes this statement true, that same value of x makes this statement true. And that's because uh, we used a property of equality which creates equivalent statements. So now we can see a little bit easier now that the value of x that makes this statement true is three. But if, you're if you wanna go another step uh, further, we could use the division property of equality, divide both sides by two, and we would get x is equal to 3. And now we have a statement so simple that we can see immediately what the solution is. The value of x that makes this statement true is 3. So in other words, if you put 3 here for x, then you'll have the statement 3 equals 3, and that's a true statement. And that's the only number in the entire universe of numbers that makes that statement true. So this is the method that we've been developing uh, for solving, right? The idea is move everything away from x and that move everything away from the variable so that you can have a statement that's so simple that you can see what the solution is. Now, if we're gonna employ that technique for these equations, we have a little bit of a problem, right? Because there's two occurrences of x. So our method kind of fails a little bit because how are we gonna move things away from x when there's more than one of them? So the first, deal, uh, first thing that we're gonna try and do is Let's take the, see if we can take those multiple occurrences of that variable and combine them down into a single variable. And that's where, uh, that's where we get to these two examples, right? They're slightly different. So if you, if you look, pause the video for a second and look at these two examples and see if you can find the one minor difference. That actually makes a big difference in solving. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you notice that the position of the equal sign is different. And that actually makes a big difference when we go to solve. And here's the reason why. In this first example, these three terms, so remember that the equal sign separates the two sides of the equation. So in these three, these three terms are on the left-hand side of this equation, and then this term is on the right-hand side. But why that matters is because these two occurrences of the variable, they're ready to be combined because they're already on the same side of the equation. We can just add 2x and 4x to get 6x. So here, if we add 2x and 4x, we'll get 6x plus 5 equals 11. Okay, now contrast that with this, uh, this equation over here. Here's the middle of the equation. 
2x is on the left-hand side and 4x is on the right-hand side. So we can't just go adding those up because they're on opposite sides of the equation. We need to use a property of equality to create an equivalent statement. So we'll have to either move 2x to the right-hand side to be with 4x, or we can move 4x to the left-hand side to be with 2x. And this is kind of where you have to take a step back and think about it a little bit. This is an opportunity for you to raise your sophistication level as a mathematician. You have to think a step ahead and think which is going to lead me to a more efficient path or lead me down a more efficient path to a solution. Would you rather subtract 2x from both sides or subtract 4x from both sides? And either way will lead you to a correct solution. One just happens to be a more efficient path with lower probability of mistakes. Now, pause the video again and think about it. Which would you rather do? Would you rather subtract 2x from both sides or 4x from both sides? All right, hopefully you paused the video. And uh, so if it were me personally solving this equation, I would subtract 2x from both sides. And the reason why is because now when we subtract 2x from both sides, this part becomes zero and goes away from the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have 4x minus 2x, which is positive 2x. So even though the variable's on the right-hand side of the equation, it's positive, and that just helps. It eliminates one possibility of making a mistake with a sign later on. So it's a little bit higher probability that we'll get it right in the end. If you had subtracted 4x from both sides, you would have negative 2x on this side. Okay, so this part made 0, this is 5, and we have equals 2x plus 11. Now, at this point, both of these equations are two-step equations, and then we can employ the technique that we talked about at the beginning of the video, which is isolate x, right? Move everything away from x. So now we're just using properties of equality to move pieces away from x and get equivalent statements. So we can subtract 5 from both sides, and we'll get 6x equals 6. And then we can divide both sides by 6, and we'll get x equals 1. Okay. Now for this one, x is on the right-hand side, so I'll want to move 11 to the left, and I'll want to move 2 to the left. The order in which you do it matters a little bit. You can move 2 first by using division, or you can move 11 first by division or by subtraction. But if you choose to divide everything by 2 first, it will make a little bit uh, it will make your statement a little bit messier because you'll have some fractions to deal with. But either way, it is totally doable. It's a little bit more efficient if you decide to subtract 11 first. So if we subtract 11 from both sides, we'll have negative 6 is equal to 2x. And then I'll divide both sides by 2. And we have negative 3 is equal to x, our solution. All right, that's it for this one. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.